Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on pilotology where we will be discussing class ECO Aerospace and its types. Class ECO Aerospace, it's uh, actually very interesting aerospace and as its name implies, Class E. Many people will call it Class Everywhere Aerospace. Why it is everywhere? Because Class Echo Airspace is designed to be a controlled airspace which is not classified as Class Alpha, Bravo, Charlie or Delta. It is a way that the ATC can still control you even though you're outside of Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. That is why essentially you're gonna find it almost everywhere. There are a lot of types for Class Echo Aerospace, but before we go and discuss the types, let's actually discuss the purpose of Class Echo Aerospace and why it was made in the first place. And when we understand the purpose, understanding the different types will be much easier. Class Echo Aerospace serves multiple purposes, but the most important one is controlling the traffic in the airspace. And what I mean by controlling the traffic in the airspace is separating the IFR traffic from the VFR traffic. Although it is a controlled airspace, but if you are operating VFR, you don't need a specific clearance or radio communication to operate in the airspace. However, if you are operating IFR, you will need to be operating under ATC clearance, which is a common sense. You are flying IFR, you cannot see anything outside. Let's say you are in the clouds. You need to be talking to someone to make sure you do not get too close to the VFR traffic. And the VFR traffic as well need to maintain specific visibility and cloud clearance to make sure that you can see and avoid you as well because you cannot see them. And this is why really Class Echo was created. There has to be a way for the ATC to give pilots instructions outside of Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and the pilots have to comply. Otherwise, outside of Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, everywhere will be Class Golf. Class Golf is uncontrolled airspace. The ATC has no authority or responsibility to control the traffic in this airspace. Think about it like the police department. The police department needs to offer help and maintain order not only in the police station or the government buildings, but outside, everywhere else in the state. So you're able to call them, let's say someone breaks into your home, so you call the police, or let's say you are on the highway in the middle of nowhere, your car breaks and you need some assistance the police will be able to come and offer their services same concept in class echo aerospace the ATC has to be able to give you instructions and you must comply which they are not able to do in class golf that's why they have class echo when you're operating in class echo there should be a control center or an approach control which is responsible for the area you're flying in for example if you are flying here somewhere over here near Daytona Daytona is the one going to be responsible for the IFR traffic around the area which is here you're going to find the frequencies right but if you go up north a little bit more it's going to be where it's going to be who it's going to be Jacksonville approach which is the one responsible for the IFR traffic in class echo you go down more let's say to the south a little bit it's going to be what it's going to be Orlando uh, approach control if you go down more enough eventually it's going to be Miami center over here so yeah around the area you will have an approach control or a center which will guarantee they are able to provide the services to the IFR traffic. Also, they can offer some services to the VFR traffic as well. Services like the VFR flight following. Let's say you are departing uh, on a VFR cross country, you can ask the approach control or the center responsible in the area you are in to give you VFR flight following, which they will give you a um, traffic advisory so it can help you to see and avoid on your route but this is only if workload permits now since we understood the purpose of class echo airspace it will be much easier for us to understand different types and why they were designed at so many different altitudes and different types number one class echo which is mentioned in 71.71 .71 is class echo from 14,500 feet up until 17,999 feet MSL with some exception like Alaska Peninsula or the airspace below 1,500 feet AGL so if I am flying out of nowhere here 
and there is no other airspace around at 15,000 feet MSL, this means I'm in class eco aerospace. And if I am operating IFR, I need to be under ATC clearance as well. And this is one type of class eco aerospace. But here is the question. Do you think this is enough, class echo starting at 14,500 to separate the IFR traffic and VFR traffic? What about traffic at lower altitude? What about traffic at 3,000 feet? Who's going to guarantee that the VFR traffic and IFR traffic do not collide to each others? That is why we'll have the other types of class echo airspace, which will guarantee almost everywhere, which is not Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, will have class echo at specific altitude to control the area. The second type we have is the federal airways, vector airways. And those who are working on an instrument or are instrument rated pilots know what I'm talking about. Airways are like highways in the sky, which allows IFR pilots to go from point A to B. And as those airways are expected to have more IFR traffic, it's obvious that they make it class eco airspace so they are able to control it better. Airways extends four miles from both sides of the center line. So four miles to the left, four miles to the right. And it is considered the class eco airspace starting from 1200 feet AGL all the way up to 17,999 feet MSL. And you notice here, we keep saying 17,999 feet MSL. Why? Because we know class alpha goes from 18,000 feet all the way up to flight level 600. Above flight level 600, it is class echo airspace again. This is bring us to our third type of class echo airspace, which is class echo airspace above flight level 600. So you see what is being done here. More and more we're covering different types of class echo airspace, which allows the ATC to control an airspace which is not considered Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. Number four, transition areas. The magenta circle we have over here, which is fuzzy on the inside, are considered class echo airspace starting at 700 feet AGL. So if I'm flying inside the circle, class echo no longer start at 14,500. Class echo starts at 700 feet AGL and it goes all the way up to the overlying airspace. So if I'm flying over here inside the circle, I will be in class echo starting from 700 feet AGL, and in this case, all the way up to the overlying airspace, which is in this case, class alpha. Or if I'm over here under the Bravo and I'm flying inside the transition area, it will be class echo starting at 700 feet AGL, but only going up to where class Bravo starts, which is in this scenario, it starts at 6,000 and goes all the way up to 10,000 class Bravo airspace. After 10,000, it will be class echo airspace again, all the way up to 17,999 feet MSL, and we're gonna be covering why later in the video in a minute. IFR traffic doing instrument approaches to an airport, the ATC wants to be able to control them all the way down to 700. But also, the ATC wants the VFR traffic to have more strict visibility and cloud clearance requirements to be able to see and avoid the IFR traffic better. So let's say you are an IFR traffic which is flying an approach to an airport and you are descending from 1000 feet AGL, let's say. At this altitude, if it was class Gulf airspace, cloud clearance and the visibility requirement at daytime for VFR pilots are one statue mile and just clear of clouds. However, by putting the transition area and making it class eco airspace, now the cloud clearance and the visibility requirements are three statue mile, 500 below, 1000 above, 2000 horizontal, and we know this. So now the VFR traffic have more strict requirements and now they are able to see you and avoid you better, like I said. Also, the ATC is able to control you and give you instructions all the way down to 700 and is able to get you out of the VFR traffic way. This is basically what Class Echo does here. Below 700 feet AGL, it will become Class Golf if there is no other airspaces in the area. And the transition area does not have to be a circle. It can take different shapes like we see here. This shape probably designed to control the approaches and the departure of the IFR traffic to an airport. Or it can take a much uh, different shape 
but it is considered a transition area and it's often surrounds an airport number five is class eco starting at the surface depicted as a dashed magenta and this is how it looks basically it is the same purpose as the transition area but now the atc is able to control you all the way down to the surface instead of just 700 feet agl and it also offers better services for the pilots what do i mean airports in class eco starting at the surface are required to have weather station and an ability for pilots to contact atc from the ground so it gives better services and coverage for pilots as well so we covered five types of class eco airspace and still we did not answer the question i'm flying out of nowhere over here at 3000 feet how does the atc guarantees that vfr traffic and ifr traffic are separated the trick is here in number six class echo airspace which is class echo airspace starting at 1200 feet agl and this is mainly why it's called class everywhere airspace if we go to the sectional chart legend to look for class echo starting at 1200 feet agl this is how it looks like uh, shaded blue or fuzzy on the inside just like the transition area but it's blue instead and here where it becomes tricky if i go ahead and look at my sectional chart i try to look for this shape where is it i cannot find it so i'm scrolling 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 looking for it looking for it it is not there i cannot find it so where does class echo starts at 1200 feet then i kept looking and i finally found it here is it this is how it looks like but what do you find weird in this shape what's different here so if we compare it to the transition area we say transition area is a magenta and it's gonna look fuzzy on the inside but what is different here if you notice it's actually shaded or fuzzy not on the inside but actually on the outside which here comes the trick because it's faded or fuzzy to the outside it means class echo airspace starts at 1200 feet agl but not inside this shape class echo starts at 1200 feet agl everywhere outside the shape if there is no other airspaces going all the way up to the overlying airspace so if you're flying over here outside this shape at uh, 1200 or let's say 1400 feet agl you're in class echo airspace inside it it's normal what's normal remember the first type of class echo airspace we discussed which is class echo going from 14500 feet up until 17999 feet msl inside this shape it will be like this class echo starting at 14500 going to 17999 feet msl outside it will be starting at 1200 feet agl unless there is other airspace in the area we are talking about so you're flying over here at 3000 feet in the middle of nowhere you're actually in class echo airspace that is why mainly it's called class everywhere because anywhere there is no other airspace then you will be in class echo starting from 1200 feet agl all the way up to the overlying airspace unless you are inside these shapes which you're gonna find few of them around the us and this is the trick and how was the fa able to make basically the whole us where there is no alpha bravo charlie delta is class echo starting at 1200 feet agl so they are able to give you instructions so they are able to separate vfr traffic and ifr traffic finally our last type of class echo airspace where the atc wants to control the traffic beyond 12 nautical mile offshore this is how it looks like and it extends from the specific altitude it's right in here up until 17999 feet msl so in this area it starts from 1300 and it goes all the way up to 17999 but after here in this area it extends from 2700 feet and it goes all the way up to 17999 feet msl finally we're done with different types of class echo airspace there is an acronym here use it if it's going to make it easier for you to memorize different types of class echo airspace 
which is set food. The last item we have on our video is to go over the visibility and cloud clearance requirement, which is it's pretty simple. Below 10,000 feet MSL, your clearance and visibility requirements will be three statue mile, 500 feet below the cloud, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontal. But if you are above 10,000 feet MSL, it will be more strict. Of course, you are flying higher, there is more traffic, jet traffic, right? So it will be five statue mile, 1,000 feet below the clouds, 1,000 above, and one statue mile horizontal. So this is it for our video. I hope it helps you understand Class Echo better and it clears any confusion you had or any questions. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and please like, subscribe, and see you next time.